just two sleeps until the best day in the baseball season, MLB's opening day. But before we can get to opening day, I have to give you my expert World Series predictions. Let's go! We're going to kick things off in the AL East. And when I put it up on the screen here for you guys, note that the left-hand side is the fan graphs predictions based on their number crunching. On the right, three up, three down, my predictions. And looking at the AL East, I have the Baltimore Orioles winning the AL East once again. I think they have a very solid pitching staff. I have a ton of confidence in their young hitters this season. I think they are easily the best team in the AL East. I have the Yankees finishing second. The Garrett Cole injury worries me a little bit, but I think when it all rounds out, the Yankees have a solid team top to bottom. I like the rotation. I think you're going to get some bounce back from guys this year like Carlos Rodon. Marcus Stroman, I think, is going to have a great year for the Yankees. They finish in a playoff spot. The Toronto Blue Jays, my Blue Jays, I have making the playoffs as the number three seed in the AL East. They are going to be the number six seed overall in the American League. We'll get to more of those predictions there. I think the Blue Jays have a solid starting rotation. I worry about injury issues there. Kevin Gossman's shoulder worries me, but I think in the long run, they will hold out. They've got a very, very good bullpen. And the lineup is solid. They'll make improvements through the year internally. I think Dalton Varsho is primed for a better season in his second season in Toronto in particular. Tampa Bay I have as the number four team. I'm lost with this Rays team. I don't know what to expect. They could win the division. They could finish fifth. And the reason why I say that, there is no experience really with their starting rotation behind Zach Eflin and Aaron Savali. And even Eflin and Savali have been known to have injury issues in the past. I like the Tampa Bay offense, but I just have no credibility with their starting rotation of where they're consistently going to get innings. So Tampa Bay finishes fourth for me. And the Boston Red Sox, I have finishing fifth. There's just not enough pitching at all in the rotation or in the bullpen to really carry this team. They have some nice offensive pieces, but they're going to finish fifth in this division unless somebody totally collapses due to injury. Turn your attention to the AL Central. I was so close to picking the Royals to win this division. You guys have no idea. I have the Twins winning the division once again. I think their lineup is very good. They've got a lot of young players. They no longer have to count on Correa and Buxton at the same level they have in the past. Edward Julian, Matt Walner, Royce Lewis. They've got a ton of young hitters. The rotation is a concern. There's no doubt about that. Jerron Duran, the back end of that bullpen, though, is a thrill to watch. So I have the Twins winning the AL Central once again. I do have the Royals finishing second. I wanted them to finish first. I really wanted to make that choice and go very bold with the Royals. They have made a ton of improvement. I think this is going to be a big year for Kansas City. They're finally supporting their younger players. Expect a thriving season from Sal Perez as well with all this young talent around him and Bobby Witt Jr. to just go off as an absolute stud. In third, I'm going to have the Detroit Tigers. I just can't push the Tigers further until I see more in terms of the rotation and some health in the rotation. And the middle of their infield scares me, especially Javi Baez. You can't be rolling Javi Baez out there game after game and expect to win this division. They need to make some improvements in the middle of their infield. I love the young players. I think they're a year away, maybe two, but I expect bigger things from the Tigers, just not this season. Cleveland worries me because they just can't score any runs. Their offense is non-existent. Outside of Jose Ramirez and the occasional Naylor home run, this is a no-go for me. The rotation is awesome. I love the young pitchers. Bybee, Williams, Tristan McKenzie. Even as Shane Bieber gets dealt, they have a good starting rotation with zero offense. You can't win enough games 2-1 and 3-2 to survive in Major League Baseball. So for me, the Guardians are going to finish 4th. And in fifth place, the White Sox, fairly self-explanatory. I think they are definitely rebuilding. The Dylan Cease move has been made. So they are going to finish fifth in this division and probably for the next couple of years.
The AL West is very exciting. I have the Houston Astros winning the division once again. They are the best team in the American League, in my opinion, top to bottom. Yes, they have some injuries with the starting rotation, but they have enough depth to overcome that. When you're talking about needing to use J.P. France and needing to use Hunter Brown more, that's a good problem to have. Houston is going to be very, very solid, and they have the best lineup top to bottom in the American League, I think. Second, I have the Seattle Mariners. The Seattle Mariners finish with a playoff spot as the number five seed. I have them finishing. They finish with a very, very good season. Their rotation is, of course, is incredible. The offense is looking to have less swing and miss this season. So I expect a step forward for that Seattle Mariner offense. And Jerry DePoto, I think, is one big move away still from improving that offense. Maybe he has a big swing later in this year for a guy like Pete Alonso. Look out for that type of trade. We've seen the Mariners and Mets get together before. Finishing third in this division, I have the Texas Rangers and out of the playoff spot. Now, here's why you're going to say, well, how can you have this team? It's loaded. How do you have them finishing out of a playoff spot? The San Francisco Giants in their three-year run where they won in 2010, 2012, and 2014 under manager Bruce Bochy never made the playoffs the following season. I have Texas doing the exact same thing under Bruce Bochy this season. There's just not enough depth in that starting rotation early in the year. I think there is a let off at the start of the season, some struggles in April, May. They start to make some improvements as the rotation gets healthier. They miss the playoffs too little, too late in this American League. Fourth place, the Los Angeles Angels with the loss of Shohei Otani. I think this is fairly straightforward. Hopefully we can get 150 games out of Mike Trout. I doubt it. They don't have the best rotation around. They finish fourth. And of course, the Oakland Athletics are going to finish fifth. They're going to win more games than last year. This is a better Oakland team than last year. Do not sleep on them. This is not an easy sweep every time they roll into your home team's ballpark. Oakland is improving, but they are going to finish fifth. National League East time, the Braves are going to win this division. I think they're going to win 100 games. Their only goal really is to get through the regular season with a healthy pitching staff to be prepared for the playoffs. I think they better do a better job of managing innings this year in Atlanta to better set themselves up for the playoffs. I have them winning the division more than 100 games. The Phillies I have finishing second. They're going to be pretty similar in the last few years. They're going to probably have some cold stretches. They're going to have some nice hot stretches. Their pitching staff is solid. Their bullpen is solid. They have a very nice lineup. They're not going to play a lick of defense, which is going to cost them some games along the way. I think they finished second in this NL East. The Mets are going to take a step forward this year. They are not going to be as bad as last season. There's too much talent in New York to be as bad as they were last season. They're going to make some improvements. Maybe they sign J.D. Martinez. That signing hasn't happened in time of recording. I think that would be a great fit for the Mets going into this season. Look for some of the young guys to kind of figure out a little bit more. A guy like Brett Beatty in particular is who I'm looking at. I have the Marlins finishing fourth and out of the playoffs as well as the Mets. So the Marlins, to me, I just don't trust the pitching anymore. They lost their best offensive player in Jorge Soler. There's a big step down. They won so many one-run games. This is a step back for the Marlins. I don't think it's a long step back. I think they have a potential in 2025 to take a bigger step forward again. But I think this is a down year for the Marlins. And I think the Washington Nationals are going to be a very fun team. They just don't have any starting depth behind Josiah Gray and Mackenzie Gore. So I have them finishing fifth in this division once again. NL Central time, and I have the Cincinnati Reds winning the division. I think there's a chance the starting staff can be very good. Hunter Green is a big step forward for me this season, I think. Andrew Abbott was very good last season. He can step forward. They have all kinds of depth because of the injuries to their starters last year. The Noel V. Marte suspension is a little scary, but they are better prepared to deal with this this season. They have tons of depth, and the Jimer Candelario signing actually helps offset this suspension. So I have the Reds taking a huge step forward in winning the NL Central. I have the Cubs finishing second. Everybody's really high in the Cubs. I don't see where the Cubs are better than last year. They really aren't. What have they changed to make themselves better? They've traded out Marcus Stroman for Shoto Umenaga. Kind of similar pitchers. Bellinger is the big signing. They had him last year. And do you really think Bellinger is going to be better this season? I don't. So I have the Cubs finishing second in the NL Central out of the playoff spots. 
In third in the division, I have the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think the Pirates are going to make a big second half surge. I think this is a very young, exciting team who needs some pitching help. There's no question about that, but it's on the way. Jared Jones, Paul Skeens, these guys are coming. So I expect a big second half from the Pirates. They finished third in the division. The Cardinals seem to think they have fixed their starting rotation. Sonny Gray, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson. What am I seeing? Sonny Gray is very, very good. Don't get me wrong. I like that signing for them. But Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson are going to fix the problems that you had last year? That's not happening. The Cardinals just do not have the pitching to compete in this division. You would need a huge step back from Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. And I don't see it at their age how they're going to bounce back this season. This is not their team anymore. I think the Cardinals need to go younger and fo focus on guys like Nolan Gorman and Jordan Walker. But they're not prepared to make that move. So I think they're going to suffer again this year. I have the Cardinals in fourth, which is going to shock a lot of people. And maybe most shocking of all, I think they go from first to worst, and that's the Milwaukee Brewers. Where is the starting rotation after Freddie Peralta? This was a team that was loaded in pitching. Devin Williams is going to miss at least three months. This is not setting up for a good start for the Brewers. And if they don't have a good start to the season, I think they start to sell off pieces like a Willie Adamas. If you're going to start selling those pieces off, this season can get away from them very, very quickly. I love the young players that are coming up in Milwaukee. They are not prepared for a playoff push with that type of roster. I think there's guys, guys sent out the door very quickly if this team starts poorly. That is my prediction. So I have the Brewers in fifth in the NL Central. NL West time, the Dodgers win 100 games. They win the division. We're moving on. In second, and I do have the D-backs. Finishing second in the division, they will make the playoffs, but they will not be the sixth seed. They will be the five seed this year, which changes things in the playoffs a lot that we'll talk about. The D-backs have got a big-time improvement. They filled a lot of holes. I think they're going to be more consistent through this season. And it's been a long time since the World Series loser has missed the playoffs in Major League Baseball. I don't think this is a situation we have here. I think the D-backs have enough talent. They've plugged enough holes. They have more starting pitching. The bullpen was figured out with the signing of Paul Seawald. They finish in second. In third, I have the San Diego Padres, and I have them as the number six seed in the National League. I think this team still has a ton of talent. More importantly, I love their starting rotation. You Darvish and Joe Musgrove are healthy. Michael King is a star. Dylan Cease is my prediction for NL Cy Young Award winner. I think he has a huge bounce back year. There is a ton of talent still in San Diego, and there's no pressure lingering this season. I have the Padres in third and in the playoffs. I actually have the Giants finishing worse this season than they did last season. The Giants have made some nice signings, but they're not better. Their rotation has all kinds of holes. Who knows when Blake Snell will actually pitch for them. There's just too much uncertainty in the rotation. Their offense, they think they're absolute stars. Jorge Soler has been boomer bust the last four or five years. He has good year, bad year. Matt Chapman, you think he's going to bounce back? Defensively, phenomenal. Offensively, I'm not sure if his best days aren't behind him. So for me, the Giants still are questionable whether they can score runs. They're still questionable, especially in the rotation, the back half of the rotation, or whether they can prevent runs. They finish fourth in this division. They just are not that much better. And coming in fifth, the Colorado Rockies. The Rockies need to figure this thing out. They have a beautiful ballpark. They have an incredible fan base who continues to turn out to games, even though they are terrible year after year. They need some stars in this team. They need to figure this out, how to develop pitching in Colorado. This is just going to be another long year. They may not have a starting pitcher, or in fact, any pitcher with an ERA under five this year. So the Rockies finish in fifth. If you're a huge baseball fan like me, you need to subscribe to 3 Up 3 Down for all kinds of quality baseball content. Now, time for some playoff predictions. What does this all mean come playoff time? It means the Houston Astros are the one seed, Baltimore Orioles two seed in the American League. Nationally, you have the Braves as the one, the Dodgers as the two. In the wild card round, the Toronto Blue Jays travel to Minnesota to take on the third seeded Minnesota Twins, and the five seeded Mariners face off the four seeded New York Yankees. 
in the National League. I have the three-seeded Reds hosting the six-seeded San Diego Padres. And the number five-seed Arizona Diamondbacks will travel to Philadelphia for a playoff rematch with the number four Philadelphia Phillies. In those matchups, I have the Toronto Blue Jays winning this year over the Twins. I have the Mariners beating the Yankees, the Padres upsetting the Reds, and the Diamondbacks once again defeating the Philadelphia Phillies, setting up our divisional round. That divisional round will have the Blue Jays matched up with the Orioles, the Mariners with the Astros, Padres and Dodgers and the D-backs with the Braves. This sets up a lot of interdivisional type play in the playoffs and I absolutely love this possibility for MLB. And in the divisional round, I have the Orioles defeating the Blue Jays and the Astros knocking off the Mariners. In the Nash League, for me, I have the Padres upsetting the Dodgers, my big surprise this year, and the Braves defeating the Arizona Diamondbacks as they avoid the Phillies this season. Which brings us to championship series time, Astros, Orioles, Braves and Padres and in those series I think the Orioles knock off the Houston Astros and the Braves defeat the San Diego Padres ending their Cinderella run. Which leaves me with a World Series matchup of the Baltimore Orioles and the Atlanta Braves. I think this has a ton of young talent and would be a huge series for baseball. And in this series, my World Series champion in 2024 is the Baltimore Orioles. I think the young Orioles have learned how to win in the playoffs. Even though they didn't win a playoff game last year, they learn what it takes and can go all the way this season. A ton of young talent, a ton of young pitching. The Corbin Burns effect is going to be huge. And the fact they have all that young talent that they could also trade and make use of at the deadline to fill any holes that they have. I think the Baltimore Orioles are the best team in baseball and the final team standing in 2024. Of course, make sure you comment down below with your World Series predictions and any predictions you might have for the 2024 Major League Baseball season. I greatly appreciate all the support you guys have shown here on 3 Up, 3 Down. I hope you are subscribed to the channel, and if you are not, I hope you greatly consider subscribing as we are making a push for 500 subscribers and hope to do so by the All-Star Game. I have all kinds of MLB preview videos out, so make sure you go check some of those out. My awards predictions are out there as well. Go check out the YouTube Shorts playlist. All of them are in there. I am so excited for the 2024 season. I hope you are excited for the 2024 season and follow me along through the Major League season right here on 3 Up, 3 Down. Until next time, take care, everyone, and enjoy opening day.